Welcome once again to The Messenger. I'm your pastor, Pastor Mark Banks. God bless you, and thank you so much for joining me again. We're in the Word of God. We're in the book of 2 Corinthians in chapter 12, and we're talking about the Apostle Paul. And our thought for our class here and our message here today is the messengers of Satan. That's what we're talking about. The Apostle Paul gave us some revelation in the Word of God, letting us know that there are messengers from Satan. There are messengers of Satan. And as we learned in our last telecast, they were sent to harass what Paul called buffet him. They were like thorns in his flesh, like a, like a sliver of a thorn in his flesh. And they harassed him. They followed him wherever he went and stirred up trouble for him. So God was telling the Apostle Paul something through all of this, that I allowed this. And God assured the Apostle Paul that this angel from Satan, this messenger from Satan, was in his will. This was the will of God. God allowed this. You mean to tell me God would allow a messenger of Satan to check the Apostle Paul, to follow him wherever he went and stir up trouble for him? to harass him, try to vex him, try to oppose him. Yes, God did this. God allowed this. But he also let him know that his grace would be provided to suffer all the things that he would go through and that he should learn to depend wholly on the power of God. You see, God will allow some things in your life that show you, that demonstrate to you. When the enemy comes against you, it demonstrates to you you can't fight by yourself. You need the power of God. You don't have the ability. Remember what Jesus said, without me, you can't do nothing. And Paul is learning a lesson that he wants to pass on to us. As this messenger of Satan was causing him all this trouble, stirring up people against him, he go in and preach and people get saved and delivered and miracles would happen. But then he get chased out the city. Problems start stirring. The people turn on him. The people that are, are in opposition against him. Things didn't go the way he thought they should go after he preached, after people got saved, after he established churches. It was this, this messenger of Satan was following him and harassing him as much as he could, trying his best to stop him and impose him. But God said, my grace is sufficient. And the apostle Paul was going to learn. He learned the lesson that we need to learn today. He learned to depend wholly on the power of God. What are you depending on today? You're depending on your education, your own abilities, your skills, your talents. You'll fail that way. You need to learn, and I need to learn, how to depend totally, wholly, upon the power of God. Now, Paul learned to glory in his infirmities. Amen so that the power of Christ would rest upon him. That's what he said. He learned how to glory in his infirmities because the power of God would rest upon him. Do you know the power of God is made strong? It manifests itself in its strength in your weakness. So when you're weak, you're really strong because the power of God is keeping you. The power of God is working in you. The power of God is on your side. It's in your life. When you get weak, when you're weak, when you get to that edge of weakness, the power of God is there to sustain you, to keep you. The Apostle Paul learned this message. Amen. You know, there's many times that spirits, these spirits, these fallen spirits have quite a bit of influence in a lot of people's life. Bring to your attention King Saul. The Bible says that King Saul disobeyed God, the first king of Israel, supposedly first king of Israel, but he was disobedient to the Lord. Amen. God took the Holy Spirit from uh, Saul, King Saul. And what a fearful thing that is when God takes his spirit from someone. You know, that's the question. Has God ever taken his, has God ever taken his spirit from someone? Yes, he has. He took it from Saul. He took it from King Saul and an evil spirit came upon him that tormented him day and night. You see, all God has to do is move out the way and the devil will do the work. It's not God that's tormenting a person. It wasn't God that was harassing the apostle Paul. It was that messenger from Satan, that fallen spirit, that fallen angel that accompanies Satan is a messenger from Satan. 
that was causing all that trouble in the Apostle Paul's life. You know, many times we blame God for what's going wrong in our lives when in fact it's the devil. When in fact it is the devil that is causing all that problem. All the problems the Apostle Paul had, it wasn't God, it was the devil. It was that messenger from Satan, that messenger of Satan that was following him around and causing him trouble. Well, King Saul found out that when God's spirit was gone, that he was harassed by another spirit that came upon him, an evil spirit. And the Bible says one of the things that led him, I believe, to go to the witch of Endor was that evil spirit. Amen. He went to get counsel from a witch because he couldn't counsel anymore with the man of God, uh, Samuel, because Samuel was gone. I want to say something here. If you, call, if you name the name of Christ, I want to say this unequivocally. If you name the name of Christ, you have no business going to a witch. You have no business going to a reader and advisor. You have no business going for information and looking for spiritual things and looking for answers to prayer and looking for the power of God in any other area than Jesus Christ. Going to your God. Amen. Terror card readers. There's no reason why a saint of God or a believer in Christ should be going to anything like that. Uh, 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 all these other, uh, uh, all these other uh, avenues that they have of trying to get spiritual answers. God doesn't want you there. If you have a need, go to God. Bring it to God in prayer in the name of Jesus. God will answer in his time. But we have no business going to these other things, readers and advisors and witches and warlocks and, 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 and all of these other things. God doesn't want us going to those places, but he wants us, he wants us to look to him. You know, that's what happened to Saul, King Saul, and he ended up committing suicide. Amen. Going to these, going to get spiritual advice from a witch. Amen. You'll never get answers from God. God does not work that way. Amen. God doesn't work that way. You know, there were spiritual forces against Daniel in the Bible that the Bible said Daniel prayed 21 days for an answer to, to understand the revelation, to understand the dream that God had given him and to understand what God wanted him to know. He prayed about it 21 days. It took the angels to fight through Satan's territory to bring him an answer. There's opposition out there. There's spiritual opposition out there. We're in a war. Hallelujah. And God has given us armor because of this war. So Daniel, for 21 days, there was a war in the spirit realm there to get an answer to Daniel. Do you know that sometimes things can be delayed? That tells us something. Hey, man, you're going to get an answer from God. Your answer is going to arrive. Amen. It'll be there at God's appointed time. But sometimes the angels have to, the, the messengers have to fight through because there's opposition in the spirit world. Amen. So there's phases, these phases of Paul's uh, uh, thorn in the flesh. There were, there were five phases. There were different phases of this thorn in the flesh for Paul. Amen. Uh, one of the things that happened to Paul concerning this messenger of Satan. You know, Paul had a want for strength because of this messenger that was following him and harassing him and trying to vex him and opposing him. Paul had a need and a want for strength because he was dealing with weakness now. Since this messenger of Satan came against him, Paul began to realize how weak I really am. I, I can't fight this messenger. I can't overcome this messenger, not on my own. Paul began to realize this weakness and this, this lack of strength that he had in this infirmity. Amen. It was like a moral and a mental uh, infirmity was trying to come on him with this messenger of Satan. He began to realize his physical weakness, amen, and his utter helplessness of the body. And even, he said, I even experienced sometimes almost death because of all this harassment that this spirit was causing me. Paul began to realize his need for the power of God. 
he began to realize that he needs to lean on the Lord. Amen. This body of infirmity that he said, I'm just going through so many different things here. You know, the body's so weak. You know, human nature is so weak. You know, human ability is so limited. You know, he felt like he was so weak before this angel of Satan, this messenger of Satan, and he was so helpless before it on his own. This is the reason, this is the purpose for why God, why God allowed this in the life of the Apostle Paul so that the Apostle Paul could realize just how much he needs the Lord. So he said, he said that even in distress, even in, I had distress and in, in, in all of these and persecutions and distress and infirmities and all of these different things that I was going through dealing with this messenger from Satan, harassing it, stirring up trouble for me. You know, stirring up a lot of trouble for the Apostle Paul. So there were different classes of suffering for the Apostle Paul that constituted that buffering from Paul by that angel of Satan, that messenger, which was his thorn. When you get attacked by the angel of Satan, look for the grace promised by God. If you're getting attacked by some messenger from Satan, look for the grace that was promised of God and you'll be strong in the promise and the power of God. If you're going through right now and the enemy is coming against you and he's coming against you strong, look for the grace that's promised you. God's grace is sufficient to keep you if God allows you to go through something like this, God's grace is promised grace is able to keep you strong and keep you in the power of God. The power of Christ rests upon you. The Bible says the power of God and the power of Christ rests upon you like a tent, like a tabernacle unfolding to shelter you. Amen. And you will find rest in the grace of God, like the Apostle Paul did. Now, Paul said something very interesting in the word of God. I think it's in verse nine of that chapter. Paul said he would be strong in the power of God. But something else he said there that caught my eye. And I thought about this. Paul was writing to the church and he told them, that the power of Christ was resting upon him and it would rest upon us more or less like a tent, like a tabernacle, affording you shelter and rest. No matter what you're going through, that grace will just envelop you and cover you and you will have rest. You will have shelter from the powers and the and the harassments of the devil. Amen. But then the Apostle Paul got into this. And he said this in verse 11 and 12. The Apostle Paul talked about this. He talked about the signs of an apostle. Because the apostle was, Paul was writing to the church and he was letting them know that I am an apostle. And that I have been operating in the power of God and the signs of an apostle were following the Apostle Paul. I want to make a statement here today. There are signs of apostles. You know, somebody said, I saw it on the Internet the other day. Somebody was saying, if you're, there's no such thing as prophets today. Well, they need to look at the ascension gifts in the book of uh, Ephesians. Before he ascended on high, he gave some apostles. He could have said, before he ascended on high, he gave 12 apostles. But he said some. He said he gave some prophets. He could have named all the prophets, both the minors and the major prophets. And he could have given you the number of them. But he said he gave some prophets, meaning more or less more than just that. More than just the 12. Do you know there were more than just 12 apostles? But here's what I want to get to today. And I could prove that in scripture. 
In verse 11 and 12, Paul talks about the signs of a true apostle. And I would say this, no man is an apostle without these signs following them. Amen. Let me say that again. No man is an apostle unless these signs are following them. The apostle Paul said, what were the signs of an apostle? The signs were miracles, wonders, and mighty works. Let me say that again. The signs of the apostles were miracles, wonders, those things that make you wonder, and mighty works. Remember what Jesus said? The works that I do shall you do, and greater works than these, because I'm going to be with my Father. Well, the true manifestation of an apostle, these works and these signs will follow you. Miracles, wonders, and mighty works. One more thing I want to say here today. A messenger of Satan was giving the Apostle Paul a hard time, but Paul was operating in the power of God. His grace was found to be sufficient for Paul to finish his mission. And Paul at the end of his life was able to say, I fought a good fight, I kept the faith, and now is laid up. I finished my course. He was able to finish his course depending on God, even though the messengers of Satan were sent against him, following him to harass him, following him to stir up trouble for him. This is one of the modes of operation of the devil that the Apostle Paul revealed to us. Maybe there's a messenger of Satan that's following you. Maybe there's a message of, messenger of Satan that's causing trouble in your home, on your job in your life, in your circle. Amen. God wants you to know today, lean on and depend on the power of God. God's grace will envelop you like a tent and cause you to have peace and all sufficiency and be able to endure, to go through and keep the faith like Paul, to go through and finish your course. Don't give up because Satan has come against you. God is greater. Greater is he that's within you than he that's in the world. You know, even in the book of Job, I want to just end with telling you this. In the book of Job, as the devil came against Job, the devil came in a manner to try to make it look like this was God doing this, a whirlwind. And different ways he came against Job's house. But I want to tell you what the devil, it was a revelation here. Notice what God said, and this is in Job chapter 1, when the Lord asked the devil, have you considered my servant Job? And listen to what Satan said, because Satan is very conscious of what God does for us. He is aware of how God protects us. And he knows that he is limited what he can do to us by what God allows him to do. Listen to what he says here. It says, have you considered my servant Job? This is the eighth chapter of verse one of Job. That there's none like him in the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and shuns evil. So Satan answered the Lord and said, does Job fear, fear God for nothing? Have you not, listened to this, this is a revelation. Have you not made a hedge around him? Do you know God makes a hedge around you, a protective hedge? The angels of the Lord encamp about them that fear the Lord. He said, you've not only made a hedge around him, but around his household. Revelation here. God is not only protecting Job's person, but God is also protecting Job's household. And then when he said this, and around all that he has on every side. Do you know that God is not only protecting your person, but God is protecting your household, and God is protecting and, and, and watching over everything that he's given you. This is what he said. 
and around all that he has on every side. And you have blessed the works of his hands. Hallelujah. That's what God does for his saints. He protects our person. He protects our household. He protects what he's given us. He blesses the works of our hands. And he blesses us on every side. He blessed the works of our hand and his possession and his possessions have increased in the land. God blesses our possessions to increase in the land. He said, and the devil got permission from God to come in and to go against Job. But God told him this. He says, don't touch his life. God told him what he could do and what he could not do. Amen. So I wouldn't worry about the devil. The devil cannot do anything to us that God doesn't allow. Amen. Hallelujah. God draws the rules up on what the devil can do and what he can't do. Can you say amen? And the devil went out immediately and went against Job with the permission of God. He couldn't have went against Job without the permission of God because everything Job had from his person to his household to his possessions to what he did and what he put his hand to was blessed by God and protected by God. I want to end this by saying this. There are messengers of Satan out there that are sent against us from time to time. And if we walk in pride and we walk in our own strength, if we think that we don't need God and we can do things on our own, we're liable to experience a messenger of Satan. Amen. A messenger of Satan sent against us to buffet us, harass us, follow us around cause trouble till we wake up and realize we need God. We need to depend on God. His power is sufficient. His grace is sufficient. His strength is what we need. So I would say to you today, fear not, worry not. God is protecting your person, your home, what he has given you, and everything you put your hand to, he will bless as you walk with him. But if you're experiencing that harassment, if you're experiencing that opposition, continue to trust God. The Apostle Paul gave us revelation to let us know there are messengers from Satan and they come to cause trouble. They come to cause harassment, to try to vex us, to try to oppose us. But greater is he that's within you than they, he and they that are in the world. So the good news is you're going to make it. You trust in God, you're going to make it. You're going to overcome. Victory is yours. Jesus said, I overcame the world, and you're going to overcome the world. Amen. Because he overcame, we overcome. Glory be to God. But there are messengers of Satan out there that are causing trouble and following folk around. And Paul couldn't get rid of it. God said, I'm going to leave him there so that you never forget you need me. So that you never get proud. So that you never get puffed up. I don't want you to fall into what Satan fell into when he was Lucifer. I want you to depend on me and humble yourself. That's why Paul called himself the least of all, 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 all believers in so many ways. Because he was humbled by what he experienced. And it also humbled him when he looked back in the things that he had done that the Lord had forgiven him for. God wants us to walk in humility and to be humble before him. That's what God wants. Amen and amen. Walk in the power of God. Trust in the power of God. Trust and put your faith in the redemptive work of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is in us. Let him lead you. Let him guide you. Let him be the influence in your life today in Jesus' name. Now, if you don't know Jesus, come to Jesus. Now is the time. He said, in the day in which you hear my voice, harden not your heart. That's the time of salvation today. Accept Jesus in your life today, and God will bless you. Come back again and join us here on The Messenger. Join me here again. I'm Pastor Banks, and if you're in the area, come on out to our church and hear the word of God and worship with us in the name of Jesus. God bless you.
May the Lord be with you wherever you go. God bless you. Amen.